Hello and welcome to this episode of Self Made. I'm your host, D. Brown, CEO. Joining me today is Benny and Amy Chestang. Amy is a family nurse practitioner with Connects Care, and Benny is the president and CEO of the Barber Studio, Inc. Amy and Benny, welcome to the show. I'm so glad to have you Thank all. You. Yes, Thank glad you. to be here. So we want to jump right into it. Uh, you know, we love having couples on Self Made, and so I want to learn a little bit about your childhood. Tell me about where you grew up and what your childhood was like. Well, I'm from Natchez, Mississippi. Okay. Um, that's in the south, what, western part of Mississippi. Grew up parents, and I have one sibling, um, just small family. Yeah. Um, you know, went to school, high school, and did the things that children do, and ended up in college, and just, I had a good family childhood, so it, it was pretty good for, to me. What mm -hmm. about you, Benny? Um, originally from a small town, Bassville, uh, Mississippi. Uh, it's pretty much where everybody know each other. We don't, we have what, one four-way stop, uh, no stop lights, <laughs> uh, probably one dollar general if you heard of that before. Yeah. Um, it's pretty much it, there's nothing else there. Uh, I was the youngest of five. Okay. Um, fa family, my parents um, eventually divorced at one point, um, so I had some challenges growing up. But So, uh, family of five, you know, parents divorced early, how, how did that impact you? Oh man, um, at some point there was um, some depression going on. Yeah. Um, you know, um, probably what, I was what, sixth grade when that happened. Um, so I kind of felt that I wasn't loved, so I didn't want to be around people. Yeah. Um, it kind of took a toll on who I could become yeah. at an early age, so I really had to find myself. But um, it, was, it was challenging. I could say it was very challenging, but it helped me as I grew. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It helped me as I grew. So, Amy, talk to me about uh, high school in Natchez, Mississippi. What were your high school years like? So, my high school years, uh, I was an athlete. Okay. I played uh, basketball and softball. My main focus was in basketball. Okay. Um, did pretty well. Had um, scholarship offers. Did not take them because I wanted to become a nurse. You know, yeah. nursing was my dream. It was my aspiration. I knew since I was a kid that I wanted to be a nurse. So. Um, I, like I said, I did not accept the, the scholarship offers that I had, and I w ended up going to Southern and, um, to pursue nursing, my nursing career. But my high school years were great. I play, we played ball and did pretty well, and I just really enjoyed my high school so years. So why were you so passionate about nursing? I don't know. It was just always ingrained in me. Yeah. Um, never really just had any, uh, you know, any experience in nursing. Uh, my grandmother was a nurse. She was an LPN. Um, I would watch her as she went back and forth to work. Uh -huh. I had a cousin that was a nurse. She did home health nursing. Yeah. Um, I would uh, go back and forth with her as she would go to the different homes of different patients. Yeah. And that was the only you know experience I got in that. But it was just always ingrained in me that right. I knew that nursing was for me. And when I got to college, I needed to pursue that. You know, uh, my time playing ball, which I really enjoyed, it was over for me. So. Yeah. But I really enjoy it, and I, I play every now and then. Um, even try to play with my husband, but you know. Who, who, who's better? Come on. Now. <laughs> Come on, really. <laughs> you, know, you know. I'm just a natural take, born athlete. Take them to the hoop. Yeah, you know, you know. You know, we have to let them win sometimes. Benny, tell me about your high school days in, in Bassfield, Mississippi. Uh, oh, man, you, that you was... Were, you were an athlete as well, right? Yes, sir. Right? Okay. Yes, sir. Um, I played basketball, I ran track, mm -hmm. and played football my senior year. Um, and also was in the band. Wow. So I did all of those things. Yeah, no uh, spare time. No spare time. Mm -hmm. No spare time. Um, I was pretty good in track and basketball. I wasn't the best. Football, um, I played spring football like 10th grade in my junior year. And um, going into my senior year, they begged me to come out there. Yeah. Um, called my dad, and I had no idea I was going to be playing football. Yeah. Got out there, and I played running back, punt return, kick return, and cornerback. Started at all those positions. Wow. So um, it was... I guess you could say that's when I really found myself. Yeah. Um, so before the football and being an athlete, you know, in band, I was a section leader in the drum line. 
Okay. So we got all superior all years. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you know, it was it was really good. Um, I can I can say that I really found myself as a true leader yeah. in high school. So Amy, as you transitioned to Southern to pursue uh, your career in uh, nursing, uh, mm -hmm. what was that like? And tell me some of the challenges you faced. Well, a challenge that I faced um, going to Southern um, to pursue a nursing career, I'll never forget, it was just profound in my life. Um, you know, you go to school, you do all your prereqs, you have prereqs before getting into nursing school. Right. You also have an academic advisor. Everyone has an academic advisor, you know, in relation to your field. Right. Um, so I did my prereqs, I called my I remember talking to my academic advisor and she told me that I would not get into nursing school. Not wow. because I didn't meet all the requirements, because I met every requirement that was needed to get into nursing school, yeah. but because they were not high enough. So many others that applied to nursing school were basically smarter. So in other words, you know, they only t you only have so many that- So many slots. That's that they, right, and yeah. I just wasn't gonna make the slot. So when I got off the phone with her, I just profoundly remember, I could tell you exactly where I was yeah. at the school. I called my mom and I said, mom, my academic advisor said I was not gonna get into nursing school. And my mama said, well, she don't, she don't know the God we serve. So that right there gave me the push. That yeah. right there gave me the drive. That right there made me go ahead and apply and I got in. Wow. So the God I serve got so, me in. So that's different. right. It's so that's different right. than the academic yeah, that's advisor. That's right. That's right. Even though I met all the requirements, you know, it's, it's like, wow. Yeah. So Benny, um, how was college like for you? Oh man, it started off um, shaky. Uh, my dream was to go to Alcorn State straight out of high school. Mm -hmm. um, of course, you know, as kids, we don't make all the right decisions. Yeah. Um, but my dad wasn't pushy. Uh, he wanted me to live with my decisions. Yeah. Um, I made some wrong choices, so I ended up going to junior college at first. So um, I ended up at Jones Junior College for like two and a half years. Um, that was a lesson learned. Um, I really learned a lot about myself, um, really how to take care of business, um, make sure that I get things handled correctly. Mm -hmm. And I eventually got to Alcorn State. Um, once I got there, um, I wasn't on scholarship at first. I was just out there on Pell Grant and things of that nature, paying for my own school. But I tried out for the band while I was out there. And luckily I got that full scholarship. Yeah. And it went from there, man. Uh, I changed my major from being a music major to health and physical education. I wanted to be a football coach, mm -hmm. okay. you know. But you know, things kind of went a little different. Yeah, but it was it was it was still a little challenge, but it was great at the same time. I learned a lot about myself and planning and all those things like that. So, so Amy, you you entered nursing school, uh, successfully complete mm -hmm. uh, your coursework, and then you have to take the National examination, right? National examination. So tell me about that experience and tell me about the day that you found out that you had passed. Well, that experience, just preparing for the national board, you know, it was exhausting, it's nerve wracking, but you know, you put in the time because during that time I was also working. I had received an offer for my first job uh, while I was in school, um, University Medical Center in Jackson, Mississippi, yeah. came through um, the class and offered, you know, employment and in return they would help assist financially with the loan. So yeah. I took that opportunity. Um, so, you know, I started working there and was preparing for boards as well. Um, went took my boards and passed. It was Valentine's Day when I found out that really? I passed. <laughs> yes, and it was amazing. It was a big load off, right. off of me. So it was, it was pretty good. Pretty so good. talk to me, Benny, about how you and Amy met. I hear, <laughs> I hear there are two different versions. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I can't say that we caught I at the um, Alcorn Jackson State game in 2002. Yes. 2002. Um, so I was, you say you, when you say you caught eye, what, what is that? She was sitting up top <laughs> and I was sitting down low. I uh -huh. was with my best friend and his frat brothers at the time. I hadn't, I hadn't um, crossed uh, Cap Alpha Psi Incorporated yet. Yeah. So she thought I was probably one of them then. <laughs> she was looking down and she told me to come here. And I was like, ain't no way she's talking to me. So I avoided it. But a few months later, once I um, transferred out to Alcorn State, I uh, went to a basketball game and I saw her. And later on, we met up that night, nightclub. And nightclub, college students. Yeah. <laughs> nightclub, that's what we did. Is that your we, recollection of it? Is that well, how it It's okay, yeah, it's well, all right. Add, add the right. missing details. It's What's all missing? right. Well, you know, come, I said, come here. 
Yeah, you told me. That. Okay, wow. Well, okay, well, that's neither <laughs> here or there. Uh, it's neither here or there. But yes, we did. Um, he said he saw me at the basketball game a couple of months later. I didn't see him at the basketball game. But, that, that is the basketball game where you told him to come here. No, well, it was a football game. A football, football game. game. Yeah. Okay. Football game is when I told him to come in. But you didn't see him at that game. No, I saw him at oh, the football saw, okay. game. Yeah, I didn't see him at the football game. I saw him at the football game. You didn't um, see me at the basketball yeah, game. Yeah, I saw him at the football game, and um, and that was it. You know, we didn't talk or anything. And then I um, end up going to coming back home from college on a weekend, yeah. and I end up going to a basketball game, Alcorn State. I was there with my brother, Alcorn State. Um, and we went to the basketball game, and after that, we went to the club after that. Yeah. And then that's when I saw him again. And that's when we met. Okay. Because okay. it was like, hey, I've seen him before now, you know. Right, yeah. right. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. uh, I want to go back to your nursing career. So you, you passed the national exam. Talk to me about, uh, you know, your early years in nursing and how you made the decision to go back and become a family nurse practitioner. So um, as far as my nursing career, when it started... Um, when I became licensed, that was February of 2000 and what, four, 2000, yes, February 2004, mm -hmm. um, I, I became a licensed registered nurse, um, started working at the University Medical Center. I was working on the med surge unit there, 12-hour okay. shifts, 7P to 7A. Um, I did that, the med surge unit, for about two years. Mm -hmm. After two years, I said, oh, I need a little change. This is not quite it for me. Yeah. You know, there are different areas in nursing. Right. You know, not just the hospital. You can work in nursing homes. Travel, you can work in school. You can travel. Nurse, so, yes, yeah. you know, just different areas. And I was like, this med search floor is not really it for me. So um, I was talking to another um, nurse that was there. He started off on med search floor, but then he transferred down to the emergency room. And I feel like, hey, let's let me try out the emergency room, the ER. Yeah. So I transferred from the med surge unit to the ER unit at University Medical Center. Okay. And that was it for me. That yeah. that was it, the ER. So I did that at the university for about four years. And after four years of being there, I decided to do travel nursing. Okay. And um, I did travel nursing for a couple of years. It would have I think I did it like three or four years travel nursing. Would have did a lot longer, but he, you know, was like, yeah, it's time to come on off the road. So, uh, but that's how I, um, I did that. I did the travel nursing for a couple of years and uh, then ended up back in Hattiesburg alongside him. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Benny, mm -hmm. talk to me about the Barber Studio, Inc. It's not, I hear it's not just your ordinary uh, barbershop. What's special about it? Man, uh, we're appointment-based, mm -hmm. um, very professional. Um, we try to make sure we maintain our time. Um, if you really look at it, we go into detail of understanding our cuts and being professional as in you get here and we're going to give you what you want in a timely basis. Yeah. We don't want to want you sitting here waiting no more than 10 minutes at least. Um, you get in the chair and we take care of you. We don't have all of that rah-rah, you yeah. know. So normal, the, you don't have all the normal there you barbershop go. There talk. you go. There yeah. you mm -hmm. go. Just strictly business. It's strictly business. Um, and we have our, our app as well. You know, you can go on there and download the app and you book from there. You don't have to do all the phone calling. Right. So we're, we're trying to be very different and not traditional. Right. So so how many uh, barbers do you have working? So for I you? have 14 barbers working for me right now. Mm -hmm. And so well, tell me about this journey now. So you, you didn't. So how, where did you start to get to where you are now? Um, in 2013, right before that, um, I took ownership and. It may have been about five of us in there. Okay. Um, the barbershop was about 800 square feet mm -hmm. at that time. And I had to start all over. I had to let all of them go. And I was in there by myself working up sun up to sundown. And that really helped me understand the ins and outs of everything. That's from yes. business to working, um, just on hands, knowing everything about the business. Um, even the CPA stuff, I can write my own, like, <laughs> just breaking it all the way down right. from all money skills and everything. Um, but after that, I had one of my friends to come back that worked with me. His name is Jonathan Cullen. Uh -huh. Came back with mm -hmm. me and that was mm -hmm. the blessing right there. I mean, mm -hmm. once he came back and started helping me, it just was a flow of barbers just started coming. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Start coming, and just start coming. And it was like, wow, I'm overloaded. I went to probably like from four to 10 within two months. And I yeah. had to buy a whole nother section and we went from 800 square feet to 2,400 square feet. And wow. it was a blessing, man. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, Amy, uh, yeah. Yeah. so talk to me about 
what led to your decision to become a family nurse practitioner? Uh, you had tried out a variety of uh, mm -hmm. you know, roles and responsibility as a registered nurse. Mm -hmm. What led to you making that next next step? I just decided that, hey, you know, um, I'm getting older, um, married now, family, life. I really didn't, wasn't interested in working 12 hour shifts anymore. Yeah. Um, the pace of the ER, you know, the ER that is unpredictable. Yeah. You never know, you know, uh, what's coming in or, you know, what's going to happen at any moment. Right. And the pace just became, uh, you know, it's like, mm, yeah. not even really interested in the pace anymore. So I decided, I was thinking, okay, what can I do? If it's not an ER nurse, you know, what can I do? And yeah. there was nothing else in the registered nurse regimen that I, I was interested in. So I so said, why not go back to school? Why not go to a higher level yeah. and kind of change roles a little bit? Right. Why not? So that's what I decided to do. And it's been a blessing ever since. So what was that journey like? Oh, that journey. <laughs> Long, <laughs> tedious nights because yeah. I still had to work full time right. um, to get through school. Long, tedious nights of studying, long, tedious nights of testing, long, tedious um, days. I had to do um, clinicals. Yeah. You know, um, you do your coursework. Um, I did online coursework, yeah. online co coursework, but you have to do clinicals um, around your area. So yeah. finding different doctors or different other nurse practitioners that would teach you. Yeah. You know, you have had to do that on the side. So two years of that and. Again, there's national examination. Yeah. So um, I did that. The national examinations for nurse practitioners, you have two national okay. examinations. You just pick one um, and you take that, uh, that certification and you, know, you become certified. Um, one of my uh, preceptors, African-American male, um, one of my preceptors, as I was talking to him, we were sitting talking and I looked on his desk uh -huh. and he had two of the national board certifications. And I said, hey, um, you have two, you know, you only need one. Why did you get two? Why did you take both tests? Right. He's like, oh, just to push myself. <laughs> and that stuck with me. Yeah. You know, and it said it, it just if if you don't push yourself, who's going to push you? Right. You know, right. why not take both exams to see? Right. And so that's what I did. I took both exams and passed both exams. So wow. I'm certified in both areas, just both of the national boards right. for nurse practitioners. So amazing. Yeah. So <laughs> just because it's, there's that, not one that's better than the other. You just, know, that's self-made talk yeah, right yeah. there. I love, I, love, I love to hear that kind just of talk. Just why not? <laughs> just why not? So that's so what I did. Benny, yeah. Um, yeah. Benny, talk to me about um, the challenges that you mm -hmm. face as an entrepreneur. Uh, starting a business and, and, and having to break it all the way down to nothing mm -hmm. to build it back up to what you dreamed it to be. Man, um, really trying to protect that mental because um, sometimes you want to give up, you know, but mm -hmm. that quit isn't in you. Yeah. I wasn't built that way. Um, seeing my dad, he never quit, never gave up. Yeah. Um, so that was one of the main things was protecting that mental. Uh, my wife was always supportive of me. Yeah. Um, she stayed behind me and let me know, you know, we can do this. Right. You're going to be all right. Right. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> I can say that if you really look at going into those business, at, um, I guess you could say uh, thinking about it as a, um, what's the word I'm looking for? accusations or whatever like you have people that want to do things that you don't want them to do and then right. you have to let them go and you don't, you don't really want to tear nobody down but you have to do that right you know but right. then it's your business yeah i have to make sure i'm making the right decision for my business and my family right mm -hmm. so it was really hard man just trying to protect that mental right it was really hard that's uh that's one of the things that within my organization i try to train my staff to be mentally tough mm -hmm. yeah because there are so many um tough decisions mm -hmm. and, and tough predicaments that you find yourself in in business and if you're not mentally tough you'll find yourself caving in mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. to things that are not in your best interest mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm. one of the things I think I was it was New York Weekly something I did a, uh, a interview last week about uh, I think it was five things that I, learned, that, that I wish I had known before I became a CEO but, mm -hmm. but one of the things was that you know never hire anyone you can't fire there mm. you go right never hire anyone mm. you can't fire right mm. because you know you can care about a person you can respect a person but if, if the person can't get the job done mm -hmm. you know at the same time you have to, right. you have to let them go and move on right and so mm -hmm. uh amy i'm going to pivot back to you mm -hmm. 
You're currently with uh, Connects Cares. Yes. As a family nurse practitioner. Yes. Uh, talk to me about what you do now in your current role. With Connects Care, um, it's it's an organization in which um, we work out of clinics. We have two clinics. One's located in Bassfield, Mississippi, which is where my husband's from. Okay. You know, <laughs> what's the odds of that? Right. So, <laughs> clinic in Bassfield, Mississippi. There's a clinic in um, Hattiesburg, Mississippi. Okay. Um, the the um, the clinic in Hattiesburg is is new, pretty you know, pretty new. Um, it was it just opened a couple of months ago. Um, within the organization, we also do telehealth medicine, okay. um, where you know, patients can call in. You know, they can't get to the clinic, or you know, they don't have a ride, or they're just physically not able to. Right. Um, they can dial up by phone. We also do nursing homes, go to different nursing homes around the local area, um, take care of the residents in the nursing homes right. as well. So okay. it's just uh, just a well-rounded um, organization in which um, I work with, which is funny. My um, as I was in school, uh, my neighbor, you know, my neighbor is just coming through. Hey, Amy, you know, how you doing? What you doing? I said, oh, I'm back in school and stuff. You yeah. know, doing. <laughs> he was like, oh, what are you you know, what are you studying? And um I told him and he was like, oh, well, I own a clinic. You know, he was a nurse practitioner. I oh, own really? a clinic. Yeah. <laughs> and um, he said, uh, when you get out of school, just just holler at me, you know, just come back and talk to me huh. and um, we'll see about getting, you know, getting you hired. And that's exactly what I did. And I've just been taking really? off with, with him just like that. <laughs> so God worked that thing out. For right. Me. Right. <laughs> <laughs> he worked it out. Yes. He so, worked it uh, out. Yes. Benny, I want to ask you uh, yes. in your in your life, uh, who has been uh, most influential? Oh, my, my wife, um, seeing her get up and just keep pushing. Mm -hmm. She never stops. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So with her doing what she does, I can't stop. I can't give up. That's right. I have yeah. to I have to keep pushing and keep going. That's she right. always tells me That's right. that there's no excuses. You got to keep going. That's right. right. Got to keep going. No excuses. So, no excuses. <laughs> no excuses. <laughs> so what excuses. what do you have uh, on the horizon for uh, the barber studios? What do you see yourself going with this? Um, business? Franchises. Yeah. Um, that's mm -hmm. the next step, um, opening up more. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, she always tells me more, Yeah. Mm -hmm. more. Right. Mm -hmm. We can do more. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that's the next step. Um, actually, we're looking at that right now. So mm -hmm. that would be the next step. Mm -hmm. So, Amy, as a uh, family nurse practitioner, uh, you are obviously uh, impacting a lot of lives mm -hmm. and providing uh, critical services to mm -hmm. the community. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you like most about your position? Just being able to help. Uh, being able to help someone, help someone, um, even if it's not, um, help doesn't always come in the form of, you know, writing a prescription or anything. Help can come in the form of just teaching, teaching yeah. about diabetes, teaching about hypertension, right. teaching about eating, you know, right. even though I might not eat right all the time. <laughs> I know better, but, right. yeah. you know, just teaching. And, and sometimes it's about just a listening ear. Yeah. Sometimes people just need others to talk to. Right. You know, just a listening ear or or, or um, just a hug. You know, yeah. it's not always about writing prescriptions and things because everything doesn't need a prescription or physical prescription. Right. Sometimes you just talk through things. So it's always being at their bedside and just helping others. Um, I tell people um, all the time that I'm just a nurse, a nurse that went back to school to get my master's degree for a nurse practitioner. Yeah. I don't heal. I don't have that ability. I can just try to help you, right. you know, and help pray with you or pray for you, whatever that looks like. Right. So it's not always about pushing the pen with me. Just So uh, someone is watching the show mm -hmm. that's considering uh, a career mm -hmm. uh, as a nurse. Mm -hmm. uh, what advice would you give them? As a nurse, it has to be ingrained here because there are hard days in nursing. Um, no matter what area you work in, there are hard days. Yeah. Um, you, there are days where you feel like you don't get paid enough for this because you work long hours, tedious yeah. jobs, sick patients after sick patients. Just like with this pandemic, this COVID pandemic, yeah. we couldn't stop. Right. You know, when the nation shut down, you couldn't go to the groceries. We couldn't stop. We couldn't shut down. Even though, uh, you know, we're still transitioning, still trying to find out how to beat this thing. You still can't stop. So right. it has to be ingrained here right. to get up every day to go help others, you know, right. to leave your family and go to help, help others right. that are sick, that are down. It has to be ingrained within you right. and it'll come out. It'll come out. So, mm -hmm. Benny, uh, as an entrepreneur, uh, having started a business, uh, from ground level, mm -hmm. uh, what advice would you give a young entrepreneur or a young wanna be entrepreneur mm -hmm. uh, that's thinking about stepping out on faith? 
I would say um, trust in God first and foremost. Um, don't think that you can always do it on your own. Someone has to teach you something. Um, go out there and listen. You have two ears for a reason. Yeah. Ask questions. There's no such thing as a dumb question. And you'll learn and you'll get it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And never give up. Mm-hmm. Right. Never let the negativity push you down. No, I, was, I, I was told back when I was young that I would never be someone. Yeah. I, I let that push me for the rest of my life. Mm-hmm. I just want to say this. Uh, I thank you all for taking time out of your schedules to come and be on uh, Self Made. Uh, it's been an honor and a pleasure to have both of you all on the show. And I appreciate you uh, more than you'll ever know for being here. Yes. And to my viewers, I want to thank you for watching this episode of Self Made with D Brown CEO. And remember, without you, there's no me.